Today I'm going to show you 21 tips and tricks to take you from being scared of Blender to being a giga child in Blender. You might think, what's it got to do with Blender? Well, if you're going to be practicing a lot in 3D and creating art, that means you'll be staring at the screen a lot, a whole lot. That's why you need to get one of these. It will help protect your eyes and also help you sleep well as the blue light from screens make it difficult for you to fall asleep. Good rest equals good health equals amazing art. You know how when you make changes to your mesh in edit mode and you left click outside and now the context menu is gone and you can make more changes. Just hit F9 on your keyboard and the menu will pop up. Absolutely nothing to worry about. This is more of a practice than a tip, but I can't stress this enough. Name your meshes, put them into collections. This is a good practice you should start immediately. You start adding a lot of objects to your scene. It will help you hide and unhide certain parts of your model. This is way better than looking for parts of your model in a sea of cubes, not properly named, trying to figure out which is which. It will make your file be organized as you create large and complex models. Still on organization, when you've added a lot of objects to your scene and you want to move them into a collection or different collections, you can simply hit M on your keyboard and then the outliner menu will pop up and then you can move the object to an existing collection or create a new one. You want to select multiple faces along a path and you use the classic shift and left click on the face that you want to select. That will be time consuming. Instead, select the face you're starting from, then hold and control left click on where you want the selection to end. This works for vertices and edges. You can also select the loop by holding alt, then left click on the loop to select it. It can also be used on edge and vertices. So, you're in edit mode, editing an object, and you want to bring another object into edit mode. Instead of hitting tab and jumping back to object mode, then selecting the object and jumping right back into edit mode, you can just hover on the object in edit mode that you want to edit and hit alt Q. Literally freaked out when I saw this. Shout out to Galileo on Twitter for this tip. Links in the description to his Twitter page. Give him a follow. We all know how to bevel an edge by hitting Ctrl B, but how do you bevel vertex? Well, if you're beveling an edge and you want to bevel these points, you can just hit V while beveling an edge. But if you want to bevel one vertex, you can use Ctrl Shift B to bevel vertex. As a beginner back in 2020, I forgot this tip a lot, so keep this in mind when next you're modeling. You can make small changes in the context menu like adding more segments and other things. You can use the bevel custom profile to create some awesome shapes. I use this to create a flight of stairs. This tip would help you fill the areas between loops that you made. On your object, select the loop of vertices that you want to fill and hit Ctrl F and select Grid Fill. Selecting the vertices and just hitting F to fill it will cause you a lot of issues when you add a subdivision modifier. The span increases the number of faces while offset to save the edge flow. These features require an even amount of vertices to work. If you have some faces selected and you want to scale these faces along their normals, head over to the transform orientation tab with your faces selected, change from global to normal, then change the pivot points to individual origins. Hit S on your keyboard and then select the axis that you want to scale your face on. Don't forget to change both the transform orientation and pivot point back to default. When you add a loop cut and you want to slide it across the mesh, you can select the edge or vertex and then hit G twice on your keyboard to slide it. If you made it this far, leave a comment about your favorite tip. Also like and subscribe. This tip is very useful when you don't want to go through the hassle of repeating the same action multiple times. Let's say you want to duplicate an object in your scene, but well, don't want to keep jamming Shift Z every time. Well, you can hit Shift R on your keyboard to repeat the last action you made. To get perfect corners, use a shell tool. Let's just shoot this face right here, and you want to rotate it to get a corner. The new way will be to hit R and rotate it, but as you can see, it deforms the mesh when you do that. So that's where you use the shell tool. The shortcut is Shift Ctrl Alt S. That doesn't look short to me. Or you could use Shift Spacebar to get a quick access to your tool anywhere in your workspace. So clicking the tool, you can now rotate to any perspective you are facing without deforming the mesh. You can adjust the offset however you want in the 
context menu. This will help you create arcs and curved surfaces. To create a pipe, normally you want to extrude and rotate, extrude and rotate until you get a resemblance to a pipe. This just looks very jaggy. The best way to is to set the 3D cursor to where you want the pivot point to be. You can do this for any axis, the X, the Y, or the Z. Then by clicking and dragging any of the plus buttons, then you create the curve and then you can extrude. This tool helps you deform your mesh no matter how high poly it is. Good thing about it, it is non-destructive. Well, until you've applied the notifier though. So shift A, then add the lattice. Then scale the lattice to cover the entirety of your model. Then now you can head over to the lattice tab. So we we'll want to increase the number of cuts. So you can increase it to how many numbers you want. Well, here we'll be using four on this model. Then select the cube and head over to your modifier tab and add a lattice modifier then select the lattice as the target object you want to select the lattice now and drop it to edit mode then you can move the point around and deform your mesh you can also adjust the strength of the lattice on your modifier tab you can reset the transformation properties of your objects Alt G will reset it back to its world origin, Alt S will reset it back to its original skill, and Alt R will reset the rotation of your model. Shift C will reset the location of your 3D cursor too. If you want to see selected parts of your model, use Alt B to select the area that you want to see, and you can also use Alt B to reset it. This add-on should be set to default by now, instead of going through the long process of activating the add-on. If you agree with me, leave a comment down below. Well, this add-on helps you preview your nodes in the material tab by using Ctrl Shift then click on the nodes that you want to preview. A quick one, you can press Ctrl T to get the combination of the image texture, mapping texture and the texture coordinate nodes. This feature is my favorite from the list as it has helped me a lot when Blender starts crashing. So you go to File, then Recover, then Auto Save, and then you can select the file and continue from where it saves automatically. Isolate an object from the rest of your scene by hitting forward slash on your keyboard and hitting it again to reset the action. If you want to create models according to real life scales and accurate precision, in edit mode, go to the overlay tab, drop down and select the measurements that you want to display. It could be the length, the angle or the face area of your mesh. This will be essential for you if you are doing a lot of 3D printing. Did you know that you can add video to your 3D scene? Oh well, yes, you can. So you go to edit, then under preferences, then in preferences, then you click on add-ons. Then no add-ons, you search for images as planes. Then after you're done, you close that tab. Then shift A on your 3D scene, click on images, then select images as plane. Then now you navigate to the video that you want to import to your scene and you add it. Having all these tips will improve your speed and workflow in Blender, but add-ons can also improve that. Check out this video for the best add-ons that you need.